The program is going to begin uh, in the following, but Ustad Freed asked me to convey a couple of things. Uh, number one, uh, his tradition and his school is not actually a school as such, but it is a living line and a living tradition. What that means is that uh, the, the story of Qawali began with uh, Hazrat Amir Khusro and his love for uh, Khaji Nizamuddin Awliya, and it continues today. And what he was talking to us earlier today, he said, look, uh, some people say you need uh, a peer sahab to be sitting. Generally, what you'll see if you go uh, to India or Pakistan or Afghanistan, you'll see a sheikh or a peer sitting here or a maqam. And the qawals are literally singing back and forth. And uh, generally, people say, you know, ethnomusicologists say, outside of that, it's just a concert. He said, absolutely not. A sama is when a sama happens. Sama is an auditory meditative tradition in which your heart becomes spontaneously uh, enlivened. It lights up and you listen to that light as it were. Both light and sound are a type of wave and you become inspired by it. So if that happens, it happens. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't. So that's the first thing he said. The second is that his tradition is that he, they're direct descendants of Hazrat Amir Khusro. Their family, one after the other over the last 750 years, uh, comes to his father, Munshi Raziuddin, and he wanted this performance to be in his memory. So I hope you all keep that in your hearts. Finally, uh, the uh, opportunity today to remember those that uh, need our prayers and our, our well wishes, you just put it in your heart. You don't have to do anything but just wish them well. Um, to start the evening off, we have a scholar by the name of Dr. Tariq al-Jawahiri, um, al the, the jewel of our community. Um, he is actually a GW graduate. He's going to say a few words, and then we're going to kick off the sama. So without further ado, Sheikh Tariq. Assalamu alaikum. So GW has come a long way. We didn't, we didn't really have this when I, was a, when I was an undergrad many years ago. But it's very, it's very nice to be back on campus uh, and to see you know, this type of dedication from, from the students, so I honor you, honor you for that. Uh, I was asked to talk a little bit, just very little bit, a couple minutes about, you know, wh what this kind of celebration means for Muslims around the world. Uh, as many of you know, this is the month of Rabi' al-Awwal, which is the third month of the Islamic calendar, uh, and this is the month in which we commemorate the birth of the Prophet, uh, his migration from Mecca to Medina, which also took place in this month, Actually, he entered Medina on his birthday, and he also died on his birthday in Rabi' al-Awwal. So all those three major events happened in this Islamic month. Uh, from a solar calendar point of view, he was born on April 20th. Um, but, you know, the lunar calendar slides 11 days back from the solar calendar every year. And from the early companions, from the early generation of, of Muslims, there was always this celebratory attitude towards the Prophet. And there are two main uh, points that I think that this reminds us of that I wanted to highlight with you today. Number one is that the people around him loved him. Uh, the people that described the physical nature of the Prophet, they said, if you saw him once, you were awestruck. But if you spent time with him, you fell in love with him. And that's the attitude that he brought out. When people lived with him, they lo even his enemies loved him. They never uh, found a way to debase him, to uh, curse him, uh, or to defeat him. Everyone just ended up falling in love with him. And because of that, there were hundreds and hundreds of his contemporaries that would come to him in his mosque and they would sing his praises in, in very much the same fashion as you will witness this evening. So this is, in one sense, this is a sunnah of the Muslims, this is a, a custom of the Muslims, is to praise the Prophet. And they praised him because they fell in love with him. They fell in love with his balance. And he was physically very uh, beautiful and, and well-balanced. And his character was, was, was unbelievable. But the question is, why? Why did they fall in love with him? Other than these sort of you know, human traits. And that really is the bigger lesson, I think, or the bigger takeaway of what this celebration means. What does the prophet mean in the life of, of Muslims? Now, Islam, to be clear, is, very, is a very, you know, we're a very obsessively monotheistic faith. But we do see that all of us are nothing but some sort of manifestation 
of the Almighty's divine qualities. So for example, when you see a mother you know, tend to her sick child, you see in that an idea of God's mercy. And when you see people that are nice to one another, or caring, you see some sort of manifestation of these traits. Now some people, unfortunately, they're, they're manifestation of you know, not these traits, and maybe their connection is clogged, or their filters are jammed up, or something like that. But for Muslims, the Prophet was the most complete of human beings, what Muslims call al-insan al-kamil, the, the complete human being. Not the complete man, not a rajul al-kamil, but an insan al-kamil, the complete human being, a complete balance of masculine and feminine traits. And this is why the Prophet is referred to in the Qur'an, إِنَّكَ لَعَلَى خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ Indeed, you are upon a vast character. And if you look at the 6,236 verses of the Qur'an, and if you look at the 60,000 hadith that we have, 97% of those are about human character. 97% of Islam is about how to behave, how to function, how to be a good person, how to work with others, you know, how to you know, play well, with others, share those kind of things. And he, peace be upon him, was, was a manifestation of that. So when the people, when his contemporaries saw that, and they fell in love with that, they started to celebrate that. That he is a manifestation of divine mercy, of divine love, of divine wisdom. So from the early generations all until our time, every Muslim community, every language group across the world has had their own tradition of celebrating the Prophet. Celebrating his birth, and reconnecting to what that means in the daily life of a Muslim. And today, more than ever, the Muslim community really needs that. Because if you take the Prophet out of Islam, if you take these traits out of Islam, you're not going to find love and peace and mercy. You're going to find, unfortunately, some other things. So this for us, for Muslims, the Muslims in the audience, this is really an opportunity for us to reconnect with those deep, deep values. And in a way, help us fall in love once again with the Prophet. Uh, peace be upon him. I hope you enjoyed the evening and, and thank you very much.